I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with the lovely nurse Amy, I'm also the author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, an Amazon bestseller, the New York Times bestseller, the Ebola Survival Handbook, and also we're the designers of the brand new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get the whole family together, have some fun, and get involved maybe in the survival mindset. In survival settings, the responsibilities of a medic will usually be one-to-one. -one. That is, the healthcare provider will be dealing with one ill or injured individual at a time. There may be a day, however, where you find yourself confronted with an emergency scenario in which multiple people are injured. This is referred to as a mass casualty incident. A mass casualty incident is any event in which your medical resources are inadequate for the number and severity of the injuries incurred. Mass casualty incidents, we'll call them MCIs, can be quite variable in their presentation. It could be anything from a car accident, the aftermath of a tornado, the consequences of civil unrest, or even a terrorist act. The effective medical management of any of the above events requires rapid and a Appropriate triage. Triage comes from the French word trier, which means to sort. And that's the process by which medical personnel can rapidly assess and prioritize a number of injured individuals, thereby doing the most good for the most people. Note that I didn't say give the best possible care to each individual victim. That's different. Your initial actions at the scene of an MCI may determine the outcome of the emergency response. There are five S's to evaluating an MCI scene. Safety, sizing up, sending for help, setup of areas, and start simple treatment and rapid, simple triage and rapid treatment. Safety assessment. In the Middle East, an insidious strategy on the part of terrorists is the use of primary and secondary bombs. The main bomb causes the most casualties, and the second bomb is time to go off or is triggered just as the medical and security personnel arrive. Many medical professionals wince when I talk about not approaching the injured in a hostile setting. But remember, your primary goal as medic is your own self-preservation. Keeping the medical personnel alive is likely to save more lives down the road. As you arrive on the scene, be as certain as possible that there's no ongoing threat. Don't rush in there until it's clear that you and your helpers are safe. Sizing up the scene. Ask yourself the following question. What's the situation? Car accident? An explosion? How many injuries? How severe? Are there a few victims? Are there dozens? Are there other people that can help? Are the victims all together? Are they spread out over a wide area? What are possible nearby areas for treatment and transport? And are there areas open enough for vehicles to come through to help transport victims? Sending for help. If modern medical care is available, call 911 and say, for example, I'm calling to report a mass casualty incident involving a three car accident at the intersection of Hollywood and Vine, your location. At least seven people are injured. There may be people trapped in their cars. One vehicle is on fire. Now in three sentences, you've informed the authorities that a mass casualty event has occurred, what type of event it was, where it occurred, an appropriate number of patients that may need care, and the types of care or equipment that might be needed. In a survival setting, get your communication device and notify others of the situation and what you'll need in terms of personnel and supplies. If you're not medically trained, contact the person who's the group medic. The most experienced medical person at the scene is the incident commander. Setup. Determine likely areas for various level victims to be further evaluated and treated. Also, determine the appropriate entry and exit points for victims that need immediate transport to medical facilities if they exist. And five, start. Start. Triage uses the acronym S-T-A-R-T, which stands for Simple Triage and Rapid Treatment. The first round of triage, known as primary triage, should be fast, 30 seconds per patient if possible, and not involve extensive treatment of injuries. It should be focused on identifying the triage level of each patient. Evaluation and primary triage consists 
mostly of quick evaluation of what we call RPMs. Respirations are, or the lack thereof, perfusion, the adequacy or inadequacy of circulation, P, and M, mental status. Other than controlling massive bleeding and, and clearing up airways, very little treatment is performed in primary triage. In future videos, we'll learn to identify the various triage levels and how your assessment might differ if you don't have a modern medical facility in which to transport victims. This is Joe Alden, MD, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching.